Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. I want to send out a gentle reminder that the VA's proposal to change the rating schedule for respiratory, auditory, and mental health is still moving forward. The final date as embedded in the documents is now April of 2025. That's about six months away. And what are you doing to prepare yourself for those changes? Do me a favor, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. If you're not a member, consider being a member. It does help the channel and I appreciate uh, you members very much. You can go to the homepage. You'll see the highlighted members and a join button. Thank you so much again to you members. All right. So this is a, a gentle reminder and I'm also going to throw around, I think what I'm going to do is I will um, uh, work with uh, the other channel I have, which is Veterans Daily. I have that as a co-hosted channel with Clay from the CivDiv. Uh, maybe what we'll do is we will do a live event uh, covering the, you know, preparing for the 2025 uh, rating schedule changes. In some cases, you're going to want to probably file for an increase. In other cases, if you do not already have a claim in process and you're trying to work on getting it together and you're going to be better off in today's rating schedule versus the proposed rating schedule, well, you need to start getting your stuff together sooner than later. Now, with all of this being said, you're never going to go wrong with putting in an intent to file if you are thinking about filing a claim with the VA that will buy you 12 months of time. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to read through, which I've done in the past, the announcement from the VA regarding the changes to these uh, rating schedules and again, the new proposed date of implementation is April of 2025. Will it be April? Who knows? Could be June, could be February. We don't know, right? If history repeats itself, the last rating schedule change that went into effect, we got a 60-day notice uh, from the VA on the, uh, the change going into effect. So I would assume we would get that again. And that was for the digestive systems where they changed GERD uh, for one one of the things that they changed, where they changed GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, from being rated as hiatal hernia to now being rated as uh, esophageal stricture, which is, which is not advantageous typically uh, for anybody. Yes, it does give you a higher rating, but uh, you can get a higher rating, but I think that it's a very narrow... Um, view of GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. So I'm in complete disagreement with that, but nonetheless, it's already done. So let's jump into these proposed rating schedule changes and some of the highlights on it, and we'll go from there. So VA proposes updates to disability rating schedule for respiratory, auditory, and mental health disorder body systems. Uh, they mentioned this a couple years ago, two and a half years ago, and like I said, it usually will take three to five years before they implement this stuff. So we are about in the time frame that they would, which again, they, they've identified April of 2025. So it says here, VA proposed changes to the VA rating schedule for disabilities specifically pertaining to the respiratory, auditory, and mental uh, disorder body systems. The changes would incorporate medical advancements for treating certain disabilities and modern medical knowledge to more accurately compensate veterans. The rating schedule is used to determine the appropriate level of compensation for each service-connected disability based on the severity of the conditions uh, as documented by supporting medical evidence. VA is in the process of updating all the body systems in the rating schedule, uh, and they're probably more than halfway done now, uh, to reflect modern evaluative uh, criteria based on advancements in medical terminology, diagnostics, and treatment. All right, so on February 15th of uh, 2022, the Veterans Benefits Administration had published these rules in the Federal Register, and, um, and, and there was a 60-day period uh, in which um, you could provide public comment. That, that has obviously uh, came and went. So uh, it moves on to say, since these are proposed changes... They will not affect evaluations for any veteran currently receiving compensation for an impacted disability. Instead, uh, again, you have that opportunity to provide public comment, which again, that period is closed. 
Moving on, some of the proposed changes include modernizing the evaluation criteria for sleep apnea. This is one of the big ones that everybody uh, has been talking about. Uh, criteria for sleep apnea by evaluating it based on symptoms responsiveness to treatment. If symptoms are fully treated by a CPAP machine or other treatment, a veteran would be rated at 0%. Contrast that with today's rating schedule. If you are prescribed a CPAP, you get a 50% rating. So it's a dramatic change. So moving on, uh, 0% would uh, not warrant any sort of uh, compensation by itself. Uh, VA will award progressively higher percentage evaluations based on how symptomatic the condition remains after treatment. This will bring the rating criteria for sleep apnea more closely in line with the stated purpose of the rating schedule, which is to provide evaluations based upon average impairment of earning capacity. The respiratory conditions, such as asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, the proposed rules would slightly lower the requirements for a 100% rating. So they're going to make it a little bit easier to hit that 100% rating mark uh, for asthma or COPD. So if you have asthma or COPD, keep your eye on the rating schedule change because it might... Um, move in your favor and you might have uh, the evidence needed for that higher rating. For tinnitus, however, that ringing in the ears, the proposed changes would recognize that symptom within the veteran's broader ailment and provide service-connected compensation for tinnitus through the disease in which it is attributed. So in other words, you're not going to get rated for tinnitus. That will go away. There will be no rating for tinnitus. It will disappear. But there will be other um, conditions that you may have and tinnitus will be a symptom of that condition. So let's say that you have uh, TBI with ringing in the ears. They're just going to say, you have TBI with ringing in the ears. Here's your TBI rating. Or they're going to say, you have Meniere's disease with or without tinnitus. Here's your rating. Uh, so there is that. There is another kind of caveat to their tinnitus rule, which is, uh, if you have hearing loss at a 0% rating and tinnitus, I believe they'll pay you out at 10%. But as soon as you move into a 10% rating for hearing loss, the tinnitus aspect, a uh, little bump goes away. Anyway, the proposed rule for mental health conditions would increase the minimum disability rating from a 0% to a 10%. So they will eliminate the 0% rating for mental health. The rule would get rid of the dated part of the rating schedule that prevents a veteran from getting 100% rating for mental health conditions if they are able to work. So the VA's current rating schedule has essentially the language of you have to be uh, totally socially and occupationally impaired in order to receive 100%. They're removing that. That means that you can still work and be 100% uh, on the mental health schedule. That is a good thing. Moving on, VA will ensure veterans get the compensation they need and deserve, especially when it comes to mental disorders. Under the proposed changes, VA plans to, to use new evaluation criteria to, most, uh, to more accurately capture the different domains of impairment caused by mental health disabilities and provide more adequate compensation for financial losses experienced by veterans with service-connected mental disorders. Rather than assigning an evaluation based on the number and types of symptoms present, these changes would evaluate mental disorders based on how impactful the disability is across five domains of impairment. Cognition, interpersonal interactions and relationships, task completion, life activities and navigating environments, and self-care is number five. Now, the way I look at this is the current rating schedule is one big bucket, and you just have to kind of climb that totem pole. This one has five buckets, and if I remember right, if you get rated at the most severe level in one of those five domains, which would be a four level, it's a zero through four scale, if you're a four most impaired uh, for that category, for that domain, you're 100% rated. Or if you reach the level three in two of the five domains, you're 100% rated. 
Now, obviously, the, it goes down and down and down from there, but you have two doorways to get to a hundred percent rating within within those five domains. One is to have one domain at a four, or to have two domains at a three level, uh, as far as impairment is concerned. So, what I would think is, if you believe that you are going to be in a better situation for a higher rating after the rating schedule change goes into effect, start prepping now with your providers, making those appointments, having those conversations. If it's mental health, talking about the five domains of impairment, cognition, interpersonal interactions, and relationships, task completion, life activities, navigating environments, and self-care. Have those conversations and talk about uh, how you are impacted in each of those and tell your provider that you want to have discussions surrounding those five specific domains. And using a scale between zero to four, how impaired am I in each one of these domains? If you start getting that articulated and uh, documented uh, as evidence, you will be ready to go when the time comes. Uh, if you have COPD or, or asthma, uh, you might want to start dusting off your medical records and going back and being seen and being honest with how impactful it is um, because they are going to loosen up the standard a little bit to get to that 100%. If you have tinnitus today and you're not rated for it, probably file for that. If you have sleep apnea today and you haven't filed for it, either as a service-connected direct condition or as a secondary condition, Start that process now. The other thing is, is if you start a claim during one schedule of rating time period and the VA changes the rating schedule during the claims processing period and you kind of make an arc over both of them, the VA is supposed to weigh your evidence against both and give you the better rating. Just another thing to consider. So again, I'm thinking about doing a live with uh, Clay over the CivDiv. Uh, here sometime soon uh, and um, uh, really on this topic of being prepared for the 2025 uh, changes that uh, will be coming. With that, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.